our next speaker is Eric Van Epps, and Eric has given us the title Interventions for Healthy Eating, Evidence from Field Experiments. So I'm a behavioral economist, and I study how to help people make healthier decisions. In my dissertation, I focus specifically on how to help people make healthier eating decisions, following from many public policy interventions aimed at reducing obesity rates. Now, when we think about the uh, behavioral economics toolkit, what tools can we come to bring to bear on public policy? There's three main tools that we generally have. Choice architecture, or changing the structure of the decision itself, information provision, and incentives. Now, incentives can be expensive and difficult to maintain over time, so in our research we focus on the first two, choice architecture and information provision, and we apply these approaches to try to help people make healthier eating decisions. We do this by recruiting participants, um, they're full-time employees of a real corporation in the workplace setting, to place their actual lunch orders from an online ordering system that we developed in collaboration with an on-site corporate cafeteria. By using this online ordering system, we can isolate and manipulate factors involved in the ordering experience and identify the, the impact that those manipulations have on people's ordering decisions. Great. So in the first study, we looked at choice architecture, and we specifically looked at the time at which people place their orders. Uh, this follows from some theoretical work suggesting that people make healthier decisions when placing orders in advance. Um, and sure enough, we do find that when we randomly assign people to place their orders in advance, those people who order in advance are more likely to think that their orders are healthier, and they're more likely to choose items that are identified as low-calorie items. However, there's no difference between advance ordering and lunchtime ordering in terms of the actual calorie contents and nutrient content of their meals. That is, although there are behavioral and perceptual changes in response to advance ordering, there's no clinically meaningful difference in health outcomes, which is what we really care about. So in study two, we turn our attention to information provision. And we do this by randomly assigning people to see different kinds of menus when they log into our system. On these menus, there's labels identifying the calorie content of each item on the menu, um, and these can be numeric labels, traffic light labels, a combination of the two, or in a control condition, no labels. Laws passed in places like New York City and King County, Washington, have tested um, the effect of these numeric calorie labels, and they found little to no effect of these numeric labels on people's calorie consumption. Um, but by moving into the online ordering context, we can actually isolate the impact of information provision on people's ordering decisions, getting rid of a lot of the visceral and social factors that might influence people's decisions in a fast food ordering environment. And what we find is that each type of label, whether numeric, traffic light labeling, or a combination of the two, leads to a 60 to 70 calorie reduction in people's orders, which is a promising sign for policymakers. To be sure, more remains to be done to best identify the strategies that will help people reduce calories in their lunch orders. What we've done in the present work is identify a possible limitation of a choice architecture approach, a possible avenue for information provision, and we believe that continuing to integrate these approaches with other creative approaches will help to stem the obesity epidemic in America. Thank you for your time.